The year is 2023. After four long years of hiding the truth behind God Valley, Oda finally unveils the island and its inhabitants. During the explanation of the native hunting competition, sharp readers notice six treasure chests sitting in the background right behind the celestial dragon. Those six chests contain items of immense value due to their earlier foreshadowing a decade ago. Because in chapter 702, we discover that the late Porcus the Ace's devil fruit is up for grabs in a competition held in Dressrosa. Much like God Valley, this tournament is overseen by a celestial dragon, and just like God Valley, the prize is going to be a devil fruit. Additionally, Blackbeard dispatched his crew to participate in a tournament with the goal of securing a devil fruit as a prize, just like Roxy Zebek. This explains the one big score Roxy Zebek was looking to make, and it explains why multiple Rox pirates ended up with devil fruits in their arsenal. Today's video will prove how the Dressrosa arc is about to spoil the God Valley incident and is going to leave you mind blown. But before we jump into this mega theory today, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for the sickest One Piece theory videos on all of YouTube. And my previous channel was hacked at 33,000 subscribers, so make sure you're subscribed to this brand new channel. Like seriously, scroll down and double check. In order to explain this insane mega theory, we need to shift our focus to Bartholomew Kuma. He's been playing a significant role all throughout the Egghead Island arc, whether it's him running away from Dragon or him having his memories shared with Jewelry Bonnie. But the one key fact that One Piece fans are overlooking is how Kuma shares a million different similarities with Dressrosa's very own Kiros. I just gotta give a big shout out to my homie King J that's from my Discord server, discord.gg slash 333vil. Me and him are always pitching these theories and ideas back and forth between each other and he helped me with a bunch of the details when it comes to Kuma and Kiro's parallels. So yeah, big thanks to King J for the support and make sure you guys join my Discord too if you ever want to share your wildest theories with me. Kiros was said to be nobility in the island of Dressrosa just like how Kuma is said to be nobility in the island of Sorbet. During Kiros's life, he lost his humanity just like how during Kuma's life he lost his humanity. Kiros was a toy with free will and now Kuma is the only pacifista with free will. Kiros lost his left leg fighting against Doflamingo just like how Kuma lost his left leg fighting against Akainu. Kiros had his body manipulated by a celestial dragon known as Doflamingo just like how Kuma had his body manipulated by a celestial dragon named Saturn. Kiros led an army to form a revolution against the god just like how Kuma led an army to form a revolution against the god. Kuma was referenced as the grand prize of the tournament just like how Kiros was referenced as the grand champion of the tournament. And even if you want to get a bit tinfoil with this theory, both Kuma and Kiros have pretty similar hairstyles. But Kuma's various parallels with Kiros extends even further when you consider their daughters, Bonnie and Rebecca. Both of these girls have pink hair. Both of these girls have strong wills. Both of these girls are combatants. Both are vengeful for the wrongdoings against their father. Both were introduced eating food. Rebecca lost her dad's memories and got it back after Sugar's defeat. And Bonnie lost her dad's memories and got it back in the paw chamber of Egghead. Both of these characters also fell to their knees in a very similar fashion after getting the memories. It should be abundantly clear how Kiros and Kuma share a lot of parallels, just like how Rebecca and Bonnie share a lot of parallels. And this is going to make a lot more sense later on in the video when we start talking about the Dressrosa arc. Because obviously the Egghead Island arc is a parallel to arcs like Saba Odi. We see that Kazaru managed to show up on Saba Odi, just like how he managed to show up on Egghead. Satomaru also appeared on Saba Odi, just like how he appeared on Egghead. Kazaru also stepped against the Straw Hats and Saba Odi, just like what he's currently doing in Egghead. The list goes on and on and on, but today's center focus is why Dressrosa is also a parallel to the Egghead Island arc. Because in the Dressrosa arc, Kiros was a star character, just like how in the God Valley incident, Kuma is a star character. Dressrosa was known for having a tournament, just like how God Valley had a tournament. The Dressrosa arc also had a cleansing, just like how on God Valley they said there was a cleansing. Dressrosa had this tournament run by a celestial dragon, just like how God Valley's tournament was held by a celestial dragon. Dressrosa was even giving away a devil fruit to the winner of the tournament, and I suspect God Valley was doing the same thing. When we think about previous chapters, we know that Big Mom told Kaido that he owes her a lifelong debt. This is because Big Mom is a big reason as to why Kaido has his Suryu devil fruit in the first place. And through heavy implications all throughout the story, it seems like Kaido wasn't the only character to get a devil fruit throughout the God Valley incident. I made a video over a year ago explaining why a lot of mythical zones have connections to God Valley. Again, we know that Kaido got his mythical zone from God Valley. Valley, and Big Mom said that he owes her a lifelong debt. We can also trace Yamato's mythical zone to God Valley because this is the child of Kaido. It would make a lot of sense that Kaido would save this devil fruit for a close partner he was going to have in the future. We also know that Higarashi must have gotten a mythical zone because she was implied to be a rocks pirate from how she shifted her face between Stussy and Shiki, which then led on to how Higarashi gave Orochi the devil fruit, Hebi Hebi no Mi, Maro Yamato no Orochi. I would also suspect that Whitebeard got his Quake Quake fruit.
fruit, the Paramecia, which fits the concept of rocks pirates obtaining devil fruits that end up being overpowered. We also know that Marco has a mythical zone, the Phoenix fruit, which makes a lot of sense since Whitebeard may have gotten his fruit from God Valley and wanted to save it for a special person just like how Kaido was trying to do. Now there's two more characters that I strongly suspect got devil fruits at God Valley and let's dive into the first one, Bartholomew Kuma. I strongly believe that Bartholomew Kuma is based on Egypt's cat goddess known as Bastet. There's a reason why Kuma was spotted by the cat burglar first on Thriller Bark. There's a reason why Kuma fought the white tiger first on Thriller Bark. There's a reason why Robin visualized the cat while hearing about Kuma's devil fruit on Thriller Bark. And there's a reason why Vivi was on the cover of the same very chapter explaining everything there is to know about Kuma's devil fruit. Now I am not arguing that Kuma himself is a cat, I'm simply arguing that his devil fruit is a curveball. I strongly believe that his devil fruit's real name is the Hito Hito no Mi model Bastet. It seems to me that Luffy will fulfill the wish of him wanting to obtain 10 members for his pirate crew. This is why Vivi is still an honorary straw hat as she got an X on her arm symbolizing the Roman numeral 10. With Vivi's introduction taking place on chapter 103, I suspect that she'll make a return a thousand chapters after that, chapter 1103. Which makes a lot of sense when you think about how Oda had Morgan's eavesdrop on Egghead Audio with Vivi standing right beside him. Now there's a lot and I mean a lot more details talking about why Kuma's fruit is actually the Hito Hito no Mi model Bastet and also talking about why Vivi of all characters is going to inherit that devil fruit very soon. If you're curious to know more, the link should be at the top right of the screen. But yeah, whether Kuma's devil fruit is a secret mythical Zoan or just a Paramecia, it's highly probable that his devil fruit is at God Valley. And more specifically, in one of those six treasure chests that Oda teased during chapter 1095. Now moving on to the second option of a character that might have gotten their devil fruit at God Valley, I believe it's Figurlin Garling, because he seems to be based on the Katsura Otoko. Now when it comes to this monster, I have to shout out Bleach Captain on YouTube. He's in my stream chats a lot dropping banger theories and he helped me a bit with this correlation. So go search up Bleach Captain on YouTube and drop him a sub. The habitat of the Katsura Otoko is the moon. Persistent theories have circulated for a long time regarding the possibility of celestial dragons originating on the moon. This is one of the earliest videos I ever presented on my channel. I even argued how the Gorsei were going to be named after planets such as Gorsei Gandhi representing Venus and that turned out to be accurate. If you examine the design of celestial dragons you'll notice that they essentially resemble NASA astronauts donning spacesuit like attire. More importantly their name itself holds a significant clue. Celestial is derived from the word space and heavenly and we know that the Gorsei specifically the five elder members are celestial dragons. Therefore this moon motif in Garling's design might be related to the celestial theme that we see throughout the celestial dragons. Katsura Otoko is known to have a diet with vampiric qualities reminiscent of Mihawk's vampire inspired persona complete with an opium drip and overall vampire like appearance. Considering that Mihawk draws inspiration from Dracula, a renowned vampire, it's reasonable to speculate that Mihawk's name, Dracula Mihawk, is a nod to Dracula Mihawk. We also know that the Kingdom of Lelucia was home to vampires and King Seki, the ruler, seems to be inspired by a vampire. Therefore, it raises the question of whether Garling has any connection to Mihawk or Lelucia. My initial inclination is to say no, but perhaps someone in the comments has additional insight. Katsura Toko is described as an exceptionally beautiful man who resides on the face of the moon. In chapter 1095, we finally got a glimpse of Figurling Garling during his younger days at God Valley. On the left side of his opulent design, we see multiple women gazing at him with heart emojis, a deliberate choice to emphasize Garling's beauty. Furthermore, Garling's older self has the crescent moon motif, aligning perfectly with the details about Katsura Otoko. He appears on moonlit nights, gazing back at those who admire him. His beauty is said to be so captivating that those who gaze at him struggle to look away even at their own detriment. As mentioned earlier, women on God Valley and many One Piece fans find Garling beautiful, which aligns with Katsura Otoko's ability to captivate with his gaze. A prolonged stare at Katsura Otoko is rumored to be deadly, similar to Saturn which is based on the Ushioni and Venus which could be based on the Mikoshi and Yudo, both of which are capable of killing with a mere gaze. It is becoming increasingly evident that Oda gave the ability to kill people with a gaze not only to the Gorsei but also to Figurling Garling. It's even possible that Garling wears sunglasses to avoid inadvertently draining the life force of Celestials since he not only leads the Holy Knights as a Supreme Commander but also resides in Marijua. Causing harm to the Celestials would be troublesome for the Holy Land. That point might be a reach but I just think it's fun to add and who knows, Oda always uses these silly explanations to answer mysteries so maybe that's one of them. Katsura Toko's origins lie in Chinese mythology where a man is said to live in a grand palace on the moon and spends his time caring for a massive Katsura 
tree that grows there. This aligns with our knowledge of Garling, who currently resides in Marijua, the palace with the Holy Knights. This arrangement came about after the God Valley incident, which occurred 38 years ago when Brock Stizabek destroyed God Valley. It's possible that the tree Katara Atoko tends to is the same one that Emu visits in the flower garden, or it might even be that Garling, also known as Katara Atoko, doesn't actually care for the tree, but rather visits it as an act of worship. Given Garling's position as a supreme commander of the Holy Knights, fans have speculated that he might have knowledge of Emu. While it is uncertain that he has knowledge about Emu, I do think it raises an important question. Comment down below, do you guys think that Figurling Garling knows about Emu? And the final option, Ace's Devil Fruit, the Mera Mera no Mi. Thanks to Dak Sake for bringing up this perspective because it hadn't even crossed my mind. He's a YouTuber who creates One Piece content much like how I do, and the quality of his work is truly impressive. So if you truly enjoy excellent One Piece theories and want to show support to someone, make sure to subscribe to Dak's channel. The Ace novel begins with Ace obtaining a devil fruit from within a treasure chest. And in the Ace novel, the story actually began with Ace discovering the devil fruit, which was found inside of a ship. Notably, this ship had a figurehead resembling Shanks's. This leads to some intriguing speculation. Is it possible that this ship once belonged to Figurelin Garling? Did Garling win the Mera Mera no Mi, and did his ship end up on the same island where Ace was? This is an interesting theory, and especially with all the weight that's added because of the connection and symbolism. Ace wields a flaming sword, and it would be quite ironic if Garling won the flame fruit due to his swordsmanship. Furthermore, the ship where Ace found the fruit was guarded by a massive bird, which relates to Shanks, whose sword is called Griffin, featuring a bird slash lion hybrid figurehead. The parallelism in this theory is quite intriguing. If it holds true, it would be quite ironic that Garling gave Ace his fruit while Shanks gave Luffy his. Some have also suggested a theory where Shanks intended to give Ace the Gomo Gomo no Mi, but ended up giving him the Mera Mera no Mi instead. The ship's similarity to Shanks's figurehead raises questions about how a ship with such a powerful fruit ended up in such a location. The idea that it was displaced when God Valley was erased is an interesting twist and it also mirrors the Dressrosa arc, where the Mera Mera no Mi was held as a prize. So considering all these elements, the theory that one of the six treasure chests contained the Mera Mera no Mi makes a lot of sense, adding depth and intrigue to the One Piece world. If five of those treasure chests held mythical Zoans and one of them held a Logia, this adds another layer of complexity to the One Piece story. The presence of these powerful and rare devil fruits on the island would make the history of God Valley even more mysterious and significant in the One Piece world. This theory opens up exciting possibilities for the narrative and the connections between key characters in the series. Now an important thing about this God Valley incident and the God Valley tournament is that they said it was essentially a cleansing. And I would argue that all throughout the story, cleansings are not new and it seems to be some sort of pattern or trend. We know that in chapter 908 when the Gorse spoke to Emu, they spoke about a cleansing. They wanted to extinguish a light. We also know in recent times, chapter 1060, Lelucia was essentially a cleansing and that was done through Mother Flame. Skypea was also a cleansing when Enel used his devil fruit to eradicate everything. And even the Void Century was a cleansing since it was a 100 year war and they eradicated the ancient kingdom. So now it comes to no surprise that the God Valley incident or at least the tournament being held on God Valley is seen as a cleansing. And it goes even further when you look into the teams of the people that are doing these actions. We know that Doflamingo has five followers and he lived up at a higher ground in Dressrosa. We also know that Enel had five followers and he wanted to go live in a higher ground on the moon. And then when it comes to Emu, he has five followers being the Gorsei and they moved on top of the red line. And this is thanks to Marco during his information dump on Onigashima. He let us know that the Lunarians used to live on top of the red line until the world government went and took it over. So it appears to be very concrete, committed cleansing, kill all these people and then go live in a higher ground. Enel did this, Doflamingo did this, Emu did this, and now with the God Valley incident, they are doing it too. Again, we know that Garling lives in a higher ground now. He doesn't live in the island of God Valley. He now lives on top of the red line at Marijua's palace. And the nail in the coffin to this argument is what he was doing on God Valley, the native hunting competition, which was essentially a cleansing. This is a trend and a pattern being passed down generation to generation, decade to decade, century to century. So now it seems to me that Figurling Garling does have a mythical Zoan that's based on the Katsura Otoko. And maybe even Kuma too has a secret mythical Zoan based on Egypt's cat goddess Bastet. But no matter which way you slice it, it seems like Rox Dizabek and Blackbeard are always going to be parallels. Because both of these men use their crew to go to a tournament in order to win and achieve devil fruits. Now as we proceed to read through the God Valley flashback, keep all these ideas in mind because it's going to become abundantly clear that Doflamingo and Garling are one and the same.